Hi, I'm Sarah from Homespun Childhood. I'm a former teacher turned homeschool mom of three, and here at Homespun Childhood, I share all things books, homeschool, literacy, and more. Today, we're going to do a full review of the new You Fly Foundations full foundational reading program. This will be both looking at the print book, and then we'll also dive into the digital toolbox on their website. So let's jump in. UFLY University of Florida Literacy Institute has been a game changer in foundational reading instruction. They have lots of research and lots of resources for teachers, lots of free resources on their website, and they have been doing a fantastic job of getting the word out on the importance of systematic explicit reading foundation. This curriculum guide is about $100, I want to say, and it covers all of your foundational reading instruction K2. So with this curriculum, you would only need this guide to cover that range and not, you know, one for kindergarten, first grade, second grade. So let's jump into this and see what it's all about. Now, this is essentially an open and go program. However, keep in mind that a lot of the resources are in fact digital, so you would need to print those if you were not going to use them in a digital format. So we begin with our table of contents here. Try to zoom in a little bit for you. And then we go into introducing the program, what the program is all about, what it includes, essential background knowledge. I really like that they include this part. They go through, sorry, children are screaming. We just got a switch and they're like, what is this? So this component of the book is great. It goes through how we teach foundational reading based off of the latest science and research. So it goes through all of that for you, explaining the research in an easily digestible way. I do recommend reading this like this whole section before you begin teaching it. Okay, we talk about how the brain works. We talk about orthographic mapping. What are the key features of an effective program? How should we teach these skills based off the evidence? We talk about consonants and vowels, a sample teacher language for using word chains. So they're teaching you the tools you need to use this program. And then we have the implementation guide suggestions for how to break it down for preparing your classroom. If you're using this as a homeschool parent, obviously you would make some adjustments for that. Okay, going into preparing your students. We have letter formation information. We have mapping with multi-syllable words, explaining word work and word chains, explaining teacher word work language, the irregular words, talking about how we can use that heart word method, method to orthographically map heart words. So we don't need to memorize the whole word, we can just learn the particular sound that is odd. Talking about connected text and dialogue for developing choral reading skills, differentiation, additional resources, sample planning for small group, and then we go into references. So they have all the research here for you. I highly recommend using a program that has the references and the research listed for you. That way we know that it is in line with best practices. Okay, so then we jump into the instructional materials. It has a scope and sequence that's broken down into different categories. So here is the entire scope and sequence, everything that's in the book, all the lessons that are numbered. And then you have suggested sequences based on grade levels. So here is kindergarten, and note that some of them are grayed out. I don't know if you can see that. See how some of them are grayed out even though they're in order? So this is really great for looking at a specific grade level if that's how you're using the program. They also have that for first grade and second grade. So then we move into our getting ready lessons. These are setting you and your child up for success or your classroom. They, they use the sound wall and letter formation to build up some of those pre-literacy skills. We're talking about how we use our mouth to form letter sounds. We talk about voice and unvoiced sounds. We're doing sky writing and talking about different shapes like curving and circles and tracing. 
We're moving on to teeth placement for saying sounds, place of articulation. We're moving into vertical lines and slanted lines. So really setting a child up for success with letter formation and learning um, basic phonics. Doing more different types of sounds here, nose, stops, beginning to practice uppercase letters, talking about fricatives, F fricatives, different uppercase letters, okay? All the way through. Then we begin our lessons. So yes, this begins on A, the next lesson is not B. This is following their scope and sequence that is designed so that you can begin building words as quickly as possible. So all of their lessons have the same format, this lesson is a little bit shorter because this is the first letter they have worked with. So we're gonna go a little bit farther in where we have more materials to work with. Note that the lessons are numbered here. This will correspond to the toolbox digital tools that we'll look at in a minute. So let's come here to, let's look at lesson five. Lesson five is a little bit of a review and teaching skill. So we have VC and CVC words, vowel consonant and consonant vowel consonant words. We have the instructional notes for the teacher. We have our phonemic awareness, our visual drill and our auditory drill. So they see the grapheme and they tell you the sound. They hear the phoneme and they write the grapheme. We have our blending drill. We have our new instruction where the black is scripted for you. We have word work. We start introducing irregular words using the heart word method. And they do note that I is temporarily irregular, meaning once you learn the open syllable rules, I does not is no longer irregular. Irregular. We have connected text, so that's reading short decodable text that is applicable to the sounds we've already learned. We have word work chains. And we have some high frequency words based on the Dolch and the Fry word list. Then we have a VC and a CVC word list over here. These are all decodable. Okay, let's flip to lesson eight because we're gonna look at some of those resources on the toolbox in a minute. Again, same format here. We're having some blending drills going on up here. We have some review and introduction, read and spell. They use the I do, we do, you do model, the gradual release model. So modeling it and doing it together. And then they're doing it on their own down here. Okay. They do incorporate some word study as it comes up based off of the function. So S comes up for word study. The grapheme S can spell S at the end of the word, and we talk about what it means to add this to the end of nouns. We have a whole word list here, lots of mapping and chaining. We also talk about how S can have another sound, Z. And then we continue on with our phonograms. They introduce blends as they introduce the consonant. So for example, this is R part one, and this is working with R on its own, not with another consonant. And then they immediately introduce blends after they have introduced a letter that you would use frequently in a blend. So we have R lesson one and R lesson two. Now, depending on your student, you could hold off on the blend aspect until you have taught all the phonemes, or you could bring it in when you feel it's appropriate. They do that for L as well. They teach rules such as the flaws rule, the doubling rule, here, the same format. As we move through, we start to see some word patterns, but this is mostly because of the A and the O. We have the CK, digraphs, ing, okay? As we get farther along, they start to move into some word study. We have S versus ES. We're starting to add in some more suffixes, er, est, ly, prefixes. They also teach syllable junction rules like the doubling rule, the doubling rule, drop the e rule, 
the Y to I rule. And then we move into our controlled vowels. They teach stable syllables, which I really like. I don't see this in a lot of programs where they talk about S-I-O-N and T-I-O-N as stable syllables and not um, individual suffixes in themselves. And then in the back, let me get to the end here, we have some more resources. There is a detailed scope and sequence with all of the concepts and when they are taught. Grapheme phoneme correspondences, so the phoneme and then the graphemes that represent them and what lessons they're in, and articulation gestures. There are sound charts, sound walls, and sound wall charts. We have moved away from your traditional word wall in a classroom where you have the alphabet and then words underneath it that go with that letter. Instead, we're focusing more on where sounds are produced in the mouth and vowel valley. They have some progress monitoring in here. However, I prefer doubles for my progress monitoring. They have a formation, letter formation guide. Okay. So this is the UFLY foundational reading program. I think this is a great resource for classroom teachers who work in a school that might not have adopted a science of reading curriculum for remediation and also for homeschool families. And I really like that this is essentially open and go and there's not a lot of moving pieces. I think the missing component for homeschool families would be figuring out how to take the lesson and pace that out over the course of a week or a month. I typically recommend doing one of these lessons, so CK versus K, for example, or SH, digraph SH, for a whole week because I find that children often need a lot more practice. Now, obviously, you can speed that up and do one or two. If your child is really grasping the concept and retaining it, you can also slow it down if necessary. And so I will be working on getting a document together of how I would recommend pacing this over the course of a week. But essentially, you would be breaking up some of these practice components onto the different days of the week, but continually doing things like the blending and the visual and um, blending drills right here. You'd introduce your new concept on day one, and then you would scatter these different practice activities over the course of a week. All right, let's dive into the toolbox. I'm going to switch this over to my computer and we'll get going. All right, here we are at the University of Florida Literacy Institute UFLY Foundations Toolbox. This is where you will access the digital resources. These are available for everyone, so whether or not you're using the program, you can still use these resources. So let's go to the toolbox. So over here we have our table of contents. We have lesson resources, UFLY apps, Decodable text guide. This is an amazing resource, y'all. Printable resources, home support, and then there's a video library coming soon. So here's where you can order the manual if you would like. And we're just going to kind of scroll down through here. So we start with the materials for the different lessons. This is chunked into different sections, the same sections that the scope and sequence were broken down into. So if we come to lessons one through 34, we will come down and we see this whole breakdown. And now with the materials, you can either download them as a PowerPoint or you can use Google slide. And then as you get a few letters under your belt, lessons up to here to lesson five, then you start having a take home practice. When you get to lesson eight, you start having a decodable practice. And so these lesson numbers are the same lesson numbers that you will find in your book. And those materials go all the way through all of the different sections. So let's jump in here to lesson five and we'll do the Google Slides, okay? So here we go. Now, this does open in Google Slides and it is digital. So if you were using this in a classroom, you could use this on your smart board. You can also print these off. So if you're not using it in a classroom or you prefer not to have the digital version, you can print off whichever pages you want. If we scroll through here, we go through the suggested schedule for a two day lesson. Now they are doing two days per lesson. I highly recommend slowing this down until you know your child can work at that pace. I will be working on a document for my suggested pacing for homeschoolers and that will be available for free soon. We move down here, we have a symbol key, so this is for if you're using the slide version, and then we move into day one. 
And so this is the schedule that you could use to show, you know, your child or your classroom, what you're going to be working on. We're just going to kind of skip through that part because we don't need the schedule necessarily. All right. Now they move into the visual drill. So you could use this on a screen or you could just have your own set of index cards with these letters on them. And these are the cards that you're going to ask your child to say something like a, a apple, t, t, turtle. I use the Orton Gillingham uh, letters for this. Um, I will try to link a chart for those as well. Then we, on our schedule, have checked those off, check, check, and you move into the auditory drill. And so this is where you would be providing them with a sound that's in the manual under auditory drill. For example, if these are the sounds that have been taught up here, you would say, okay, please write the letter that says the t sound. All right, write the letter that says s write the letter that says mmm. So we're listening and then we're writing it. These warm-up drills are great to do on a daily basis, just reviewing the uh, different uh, phonograms that you have taught. Moving down to their schedule, the next thing they have is the blending drill. Now you could use a digital blending board for this. You could also make your own blending drill where you just have some kind of movable letter or alphabet cards where you can quickly change the letters to use CVC type words that are decodable, meaning they only include the letters that the child has been explicitly taught. Rooted in Language has a nice little flip book that they make for this. Um, I can show you mine. I think that's in the Rooted community. You can see examples of that. Then we come down here and we have our new concept portion. This is where you're teaching the new concept. The directions are scripted for you in the manual. Then you move into some word work. This is looking like orthographic mapping up here. You could use a digital tool. You could also use a movable alphabet. And I really recommend, especially for the foundational years, that we're using some kind of orthographic mapping procedure, meaning we are matching a sound to a box that represents that sound. So for example, here for fish, the child could indicate um, by either sliding up a tile or a block or something that it was gonna be f, i, sh, three sounds, and then they would move their letter to match those three sounds. So if I was using this kind of a, uh, graph paper right here, I would have them tap the sound and say the sound before they move the alphabet. So I would say, okay, let's make the word fish. Can you say fish? And they would say fish. And then you would say, okay, let's tap and say our sounds. F -i -sh. All right, great. Let's find our sound. What's that first sound? F that's right. What's that next sound? I that's right. What's our next sound? Sh and why does sh get one box? Because it's making two letters making one sound. Okay. Here is an example of a tray for making words. This is a really straightforward way to have a tray. I prefer to have an option where I have more than one vowel and more than one consonant for the letters a child has been taught so that they can work through multiple words at a time. However, this would work just fine if you're gonna do one word at a time and not include words like pop where you would need two Ps. So this is another practice activity they have here where you're practicing moving the sounds and the letters. And then we did it, brief reinforcement and then come back to your reading block. Then they have their day two schedule, okay? Same general thing. We include the heart word strategies here. So this is nice if you're not sure how to break down the heart word, you could come into that lesson and see, okay, what is the sound we need to know by heart? So for said, for example, we know this and the d, those are saying they're normal everyday sounds. And then the ai is saying the f sound. So that's the sound we need to know by heart. Then you're working on building words, connected text. So you're going to read a sentence together, more sentences, and we did it, yay. So all of the lessons have this same general format. Let's exit out of that. And let's look at what the home practice looks like for lesson five. As a homeschool parent, you're probably not going to need this because this same material is in your book. However, if you were sending a child to a co-op program or you had a babysitter or a grandparent or somebody helping them, this would be a really straightforward way for them to assist. All right, let's come down here to lesson eight and we can check out those slides. And again, we can see we have this same format. We have our lesson structure. We have the schedule. 
We have the visual drill over here. I'm not gonna go through all this again. I just want you to see that it's the same generally. We have our blending drill. We have this blending board here. Handwriting practice. Let's read it together. Watch me spell. Let's spell it together. So this is the I do, we do. And then you have the you do component when they're doing it individually. Reviewing those heart words, connected text, that's reading your little sentence phrases. And then we start to move into having a like decodable passage. So if we jump back over here to level eight, we have that home practice sheet, but we also have a decodable passage now. So now all the lessons will include a decodable passage. So you can print this off and you can use this for your decodable passage for that lesson. And so you can read the story here, you can illustrate the story, you can include this for some intentional copy work. So to stretch this out over the course of the week, maybe on day two, you're reading half of this, maybe day three, you're reading the whole thing, maybe day four and day five, you are using one of the sentences or two of the sentences for copy work or for dictation, okay? So there's a lot of material here, you just need to be able to figure out how to spread it out in a way that your child will have enough opportunities for practice and for having to pull that information from their brain and tie it into writing so that it will stick. UFLY does not include copy work or a lot of writing. We do know from the research that children learn and retain these this information best when we tie it into writing. So I would want to see this being included with some copy work and dictation. Okay, so this is all, these are all the alphabet lessons. Let's come and look at one of the older lessons in here. Let's come to, uh, let's look at reading longer words. Let's do syllables here. All right, so here we are with lesson 66, closed and open syllables. Again, it's that same format as the other ones. We just are gonna have different material. We're still doing that visual drill, but we're working with different sounds. Now, notice how there's a lot more here. So if you're spreading this out over a week, you know, honestly, I like to do the sounds when I'm working with a child who might be dyslexic or struggling to do all of them. If you're working with a typical learner who has seemingly mastered most of these, I would still do them a couple times a week or break them up over the course of the week or have your sounds kind of divided into a all about spelling kind of box where you have the ones that they've mastered and the ones that they need to review. Still doing the auditory drill, still doing a blending drill. Now we're going to teach. A syllable is a word or part of a word with one vowel sound. If you are familiar with rooted in language strategies, you could incorporate this type of lesson into LA binder pages, language arts binder pages for your student. So you and your child could work together to create a binder page for this and then do some practicing of how many syllables, working on identifying closed syllables, And again, making binder pages for these is a really nice way to help your child retain that information. So we have our let's write together, watch me read, let's read together, watch me spell, let's spell together, and then our heart words. The connected text, we have some reading here. And then we have some decodable text. So if you are using this as a homeschool parent, you could go ahead and print off to prepare you could print off the different reading parts so you knew that you had your decodable resources and materials already available and put them into a binder or into a file box where you have them labeled by lesson. And then you could be adding these into you know, a binder that's your decodable text. And again, if we come in here, we can see we have the home practice, we have decodable passages, Okay, so here's Joe's friend, Russ. This is the same passage that we saw in the slideshow, but this is a print, nice printable version. And again, this is something you could use a lot of different ways. I will be sharing information on how to take a decodable passage and use it throughout a week um, in an upcoming reel. So stay tuned for that. As we get to the more advanced lessons, we also have additional activities. For example, they have roll and read here. 
just a quick dice game to practice reading. And you could take turns with this, right? You and your child could be working on this. You could do this as some kind of a bingo board, right? You can turn this into a lot of different types of games. Okay, so let's come back and just briefly, you know, know that you can come and look at these, right? These are available for everyone. So let's go back to the top here and let's look at the Uflight app. Okay, so we have this virtual blending board. I'm not going to go into the details here. You can watch this video down here to see how it works. We have uh, virtual word work mats, beginner and intermediate. Okay, so the next section we're going to look at is the decodable text guide, and this is a really amazing resource. This is a guide of all these different decodable series. Look at all these series, y'all. And they are organized as decodable per the scope and sequence for UFLY foundations. So for UFLY, we have all of their decodable passages listed here. These are clickable. They bring up that same, those same documents we were looking at earlier. And then the rest of these series are alphabetical. Some of them are linked to the series themselves. Some of them are not. I personally enjoy the alphabet series and Flyleaf. I do not have experience with all of these though. This is a really fantastic resource though. So if you're using UFLY and you have some of these other programs, then you can pull this up and figure out what to use. Then we have this printable resources section here, lesson planning and implementation support guide. So this is essentially like a cheat sheet um, for what was in the teacher guide. We have the heart word cards. These are our your regular word cards. We have sound wall materials, individual and for the a classroom. We have grapheme cards. These are printable. You can use these for your visual drills. And yes, that is Comic Sans. We have the word work mat, and then we have printable alphabet tiles and mat. This home support guide is just a cheat sheet for how to use those home support pages that are listed in your materials earlier, and then the printable alphabet tile. This video library is coming soon, and I am excited to see what that is. So that is a wrap on the tour of the UFLY Foundations toolbox, the digital resources that go alongside the UFLY Foundations program. All right, that's a wrap, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the new UFLY Foundations program. If you have any questions about this program or the digital toolbox resources, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to me on Instagram at homespun childhood. I would love to talk more about how you can implement this in your classroom or in your homeschool, because I think this is a really solid and affordable choice. If we consider that it is around hundred dollars for the entire K2 program, that ends up being quite reasonable compared to other programs that can be over hundred per year. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked this video, feel free to hit that like button and hit subscribe. Thank you.